In addition to the attribute filter, we can also filter by the metadata contained within each of our images. It's important to note that unless you remove the attribute filter that we said in the last lecture, it will also be applied alongside any metadata filters we apply. That's why it's important to click the None button after you use any one of these filters. Now go ahead and click Metadata. When we click Metadata, a table appears with four columns. Each column contains datasets we can use to filter our images. For example, we can filter by date, we can filter by camera type, lens type, or color label. If you click on this menu here, there are also several other options you can select that are relevant to metadata. So I'll go ahead and select camera info. So you can see that when we select camera info, we get a bunch of different filters, for example, camera, lens, focal length, and flash state. These are all relevant to camera info. If we were to go to default columns, we have date, camera, lens, and label. So let's go ahead and we can see that the Canon EOS 5D has six images attached to it. So all these six images were taken on the same camera. In the lens column, we have a breakdown of each lens that was used on this specific camera. So four images, an unknown lens was used. Lightroom cannot detect the lens that was used. This image was taken using an EF 50 millimeter. Since we've now narrowed it by camera and lens, we can see one color label here, which we know is blue. I'll go back to camera info, and that resets the columns. Let's say we wanted to filter our catalog by focal length and ISO. In that case, I'll go to exposure info because I know ISO is an exposure setting. So here, not only do we have ISO, we have aperture, shutter speed, and focal length. So as you can see, the metadata filter is quite comprehensive and there's a lot you can do with it. For now, click back on the None item to remove any filter that we've applied.